Hello ladies and gentlemen, uh, I am Simon, I'm here from Chicken Stock Festival UK, I'm here with John and Ed from the Smoking Pilchards. Hello gents, how are we doing? Good evening. Hello. Yeah, good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, very well, thank you. Very well. I'm excited to be, uh, to, to be talking to you today. Um, so, uh, I know we're going to hear some music from you in a little while and we're looking forward to that. Um, firstly, how has lockdown been for you both? Do you want to go first, Ed? Um, it, it's been all right, really. I can't, I can't complain too much. Um, I'm furloughed from one of my jobs and continuing doing music and uh, some of my other freelance stuff on the side. Um, I've also become a father in lockdown. Oh, so, wow, congratulations. Um, it's a, essentially just been like uh, sort of six, <laughs> four, four to six months of um, paternity leave. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> That's brilliant. Very well. well congratulations. That's that's fantastic. Thank man. you. Uh, and yeah, it's been it's been pretty good for me. Um, I uh, I had about six weeks on furlough from my other job, uh, but uh, I'm back at work and out and about. Uh, I'm, I work outdoors, so um, it's been pretty good in the the good weather we've had. Um, I'm a bit jealous of other people that are on furlough, but, <laughs> but yeah, it's um, it's been nice, uh, and there's been some really positive things to take from a negative situation, I think. I think it would have been very different had it been raining for the past uh, four months. We would have all been far grumpier, I would imagine. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So, so one of the things I've um, discovered in, in lockdown of sitting in my house um, for all this time is I've had time to sit and listen to music, which I, I don't often have lots of time to do that in my, in my normal working week. Um, so from you, um, has there any bands, artists, genres, certain songs that, that you would say have been your lockdown anthem and that you've really kind of uh, reconnected with that sort of music over lockdown? I was going to say, Ed, I don't know how you feel, but uh, Build Your Boat become a bit of a, an anthem for me over the last few weeks. Um, there's, there's a bit of a background to this. So we're, we're part of a project at the moment uh, in the Stourbridge music scene uh, where local bands are all covering each other's songs yeah. um, and then they're going to be part of an album that's going to uh, raise money for charity I believe. Is that right Ed? Yes, this is, um, it's going to be called Welcome to Starbridge and it's all local bands covering uh, other local bands stuff and it's by Starbridge Studios that are putting it together um, so you can, they're on Facebook, you can find them on there or we'll, when, we're, when it's all out we'll be sharing, sharing this on our Facebook as well. So but yeah, we've, we've, we've done a version of this Build Your Boat which is by local artist Jess Silk um, and it's a wonderful song about ignoring uh, all the things that are going on around you and if you're going to ignore things and not respond then you better start building a boat. <laughs> and we have one for that us. That's pretty cool. <laughs> That sounds really cool. <laughs> I look forward to uh, the album coming out and hearing that. Um, so um, what are you, uh, I oh, mean, cool. I've been asking this question a lot and I seem to be getting the same answer, which is touring and gigging. But what are you looking forward to when, when uh, lockdown's over and we're uh, allowed out free to roam again? What are you most looking forward to? I think play, playing music and doing gigs, um, mainly. We've, we've all been missing, missing gigs. We're very much um, we're a band that thrives on live performing. Um, most of our numbers are slightly different every time we play them. Um, we're not really a we're not we're not so much a you know although we can exist in a studio, we much prefer being on a, a live stage and bouncing off each other live. So um, that's something we really all missed. I think as well, like um, it's, it's similar, but um, kind of festival like crowds of people and being happy about being close to crowds. I've really missed, you know, like watching some of the Glastonbury coverage a couple of weeks ago. Um, it just made me feel really sad about just how long is it going to be till we can feel comfortable around huge crowds like that. All that, all that bodily contact with everyone around yeah. you. <laughs> Jumping around you see, you see, it, now it, you see yeah. it now and it, you see it now and it just look, it seems so, it seems so unreasonable now to look at a crowd like that and say, God, you know, look at, look how dangerous they all are, all, all yeah. acting yeah. together. It's almost, it's almost erotic looking at a crowd like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, for our family friendly festival. Uh, <laughs> 
Um, so obviously, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so talking about um, your music on a slightly more positive note, shall we say? Um, what have you been working? on? I know we were we were speaking before I started recording um, about some work that you've been working on. So tell us tell us about that. Uh, yeah, so um, we're working on a new album, um, which we hope will be out for September. Um, so we crowdfunded a lot of our album, which is really good, and raised quite a lot of money for, through through that. Um, but it's all been postponed a little bit, uh, the recording process anyway, due to COVID. Um, so that one we're uh, looking forward to getting out and getting it to all our supporters uh, and, uh, and gigging it, really. Um, so that's been really good. We've also been working on quite a few lockdown videos, haven't we, Ed, which you've been relatively yeah. instrumental in. Well, the opportunity of all this uh, lockdown has meant that you've been able to write a few extra songs. Um, as I say you, I'm talking to John. Um, and um, uh, write the extra extra numbers that we kind of needed for the end of the album, really, um, which has perhaps taken the album on a slightly darker turn than it would have otherwise, I think. Um, <laughs> but we've, been, uh, we've had the advantage of, because we've had the time, we've recorded... John's recorded a tune, sent it over to me, and I've recorded a bit, and uh, Ryan, the bass player, has recorded a bit, and Rob, the guitarist, has recorded a bit, and we've built up, we've built up a little sort of online video, which we've been putting out on Facebook, which one has allowed us to, to get those songs out there and gauge reaction from them, but also it, almost having a bit of a dry run of recording them, so that when we actually come to record them uh, at the end of the month in a proper studio, we can almost have a listen and go well i like this about that recording but we can change it and it sort of allowed us that time to test things out really which oh, yeah. would have been would have been done by us taking the songs out and gigging them um yeah but uh yeah i think it's um it's coming together and um, there's some good stuff in there and there's the fun, uh, of, fun of trying to come up with the album title next <laughs> that's the worst yeah. bit that's the most difficult we had our uh, first rehearsal sorry say again simon Sorry, I think there's a bit of a lag. I was just saying that's the most difficult bit, coming up with a, an album title. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, we had our first rehearsal uh, last, last weekend, four months, uh, three and a half months, however it long, long it was. Um, but it, the weird thing was actually that we felt sharper uh, than we'd ever been, or I did anyway. Uh, so it was really nice to get back together last week. Okay, so James, if you like to tell us about your influences when you're writing music, who inspires you? Who are the who are the big big names that you that you sort of really get get going about? Well, I think we should start with some saxophone ones first, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> I like I like I like, one, I like a bit of everything, really. Um, we um, I tend to play saxophone like um, like someone would play use a guitar, really, because I'm been brought up by someone who listens to a lot of guitar music and plays a guitar and uh, obviously spent a lot of my time around guitarists. Um, so there is that sort of guitar influence from people like Hendrix and things. Um, on a more saxophone note, um, I first, when I first came across a band called Acoustic Ladyland, um, that really blew my mind, which are a, sort really? of a, a jazz outfit that started off doing Hendrix covers, but then have morphed it into their own stuff. And it's the tenor saxophone replacing the sound of the guitar nice. um and i believe the same saxophone saxophonist is now um in a band called melt yourself down um which we managed to see a couple of years back and they were amazing um absolutely seminal um but i do like all sorts of stuff um yeah yeah live stuff <laughs> seeing stuff live we grew up, um, obviously we're brothers, and um, we grew up watching my dad's band uh, a lot through our childhood, going to festivals, watch his band play. Uh, he was in a sort of rock and roll R&B band, um, like really high energy kind of um, rhythm and blues and that kind of thing. So a lot of that kind of influences my songwriting, I think. Um, but I, I kind of, I'm quite heavily influenced, living, living in Cornwall, um, quite heavily influenced by sort of some of the sea shanties and the sort of folk, kind of nautical folk songs. And that's kind of uh, what steers the, uh, the direction a little bit. Um, so quite a, quite a sort of an eclectic mix, really. I always think I can never quite pin down what we are, um, which maybe is, maybe is a bad thing. Um, but uh, I think that's a good thing. It's unique, isn't it? That's, that's uh, you know, that's brilliant. 
Um, so, guys, you've, um, you're gonna, we're going to see some of your uh, social distance playing um, in, in a second. Could you introduce the song that, you, uh, that, you, that you're going to play for us? Uh, tell us a little bit about it as a, as a song. Yeah, uh, so we're going to be playing a song called Sailor's Lament. Uh, and it was written during lockdown uh, and decided it was good enough to make it onto the album. So we're going to be recording that one. Uh, and it's based around the theme of isolation, surprise, surprise. Um, yeah. But it's more, it's more focused on a kind of a nautical, a sailor's tale about being away at sea, away from the people that they love. And can't wait for the moment you can see them again, but you can apply it to lots of situations. So would that, am I right in saying this will be the debut uh, public hearing of, of this, this new uh, song? It would be, well, we did, a, we had a little video that we put on our Facebook page, didn't we? But it's the first time we've actually played it. This is the full band playing it. So it's the first video. This, is, this was recorded at our first rehearsal, um, which we had last weekend. Um, and we're all just, it's just, just recorded on, on John's phone. Um, and we're all spread out in the room having a go at this, uh, this new cover, this new song that we were trying to get our heads around. <laughs> Excellent. Um, thank you so much um, for being with us today. It's really, really appreciated. We really look forward to seeing you uh, perform next year at Chicken Stock uh, Festival UK. So um, one last time, please, James, would you like to introduce uh, your song? Uh, this is Smoking Pilchards with Sailor's Lament. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, James. Take care. Keep on smiling Like we do way back when we Used to have no cares at all For my darling This isolation we're in Will pass, will fall Just keep away the ride on Won't be long Going home To look and see our loved one Keep your head above the water and remember what was once will be again. And should you falter, I'll be there to remind you. Soon will come the day, my friend. Just keep away the light on, won't be long. Going home till we can see our loved one.
be 